Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to Episode 2 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, Season 7. Uh, so last episode, we checked out a bunch of cool stuff, uh, pretty much listed all the mods that were in the pack, did a little bit of mining, and since then, I've done just a little bit more mining. So you can see I've got a small little cache of resources here, um, you know, obviously... One of the things I'm working on or needed to work on at this point is probably food. And I did actually manage to go out. I'm going to show you I found some good stuff outside. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds like it's raining out. It's just a dark and scary thunderstorm-like night out. So uh, one of the things I did manage to go out and find were some sheep. So I guess it's time to make a bed. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. That ought to do. Um, I never really did kind of clean this place up, did I? This is really, after all, just a temporary base, but I should be living in a little bit of comfort. Cool. Just tidying the place up, don't mind me. Ah, looks much better. I guess I'll put my bed right here and sleep through the night. So let's go outside and take a look at what I found. Hopefully that will have taken care of any rain and oh my goodness, what is up with the skeleton wearing nano armor? I don't have nano armor on. And I don't know who does. This doesn't feel like a terribly fair fight to me. Almost got him. Nice. Alright, so that's better. I only got hit by a few arrows. Just a couple. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go outside and see what I found out there. Um, I discovered out in this direction, you can see I've got some berries here, obviously, that I've been harvesting, and you guys saw me collect those. I also found a nice little berry set up right over there. You can kind of see it right over my cursor. Uh, there's a different type of berry over there. If we find, I think it's three different types, we can actually make a slightly better food source that we can craft. Uh, with wooden bowls, but even better for food. And this was like an awesome surprise when I found it is just over this hill, you can already see it on my mini map on the top right of my screen. Uh, there's a slightly lighter looking biome. That's actually a very cool place that I can't wait to go. Dun, 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 dun. There's actually a cool thing and a scary thing. Number one, we've got one of uh, these giant trees out in the distance. So that's kind of cool and exciting to see. But right over here is the biome I was excited to find. Just past the grasslands is this guy, an orchard. Uh, the cool thing about orchard biomes is they spawn these uh, apple trees, which basically have apples on them. So you can just right click the leaves and you'll get apples off them. It's a really good early game food source. And I already got a couple uh, apple saplings. So we'll probably be starting with some of that. Maybe even grab some other stuff. And we've got this little thumbcraft uh, kind of nasty, crazy area. This is an eerie biome. There's probably a, a bad kind of aura node sitting inside that. And when we start getting into Thalmcraft, we will definitely be playing with that a little bit more and seeing what's involved with an eerie biome, what it means, and that kind of cool stuff. And I can see world holes still not necessarily fixed, uh, but that's okay. They've kind of always been around. Nothing you can do about them. But otherwise, some pretty cool stuff. Uh, you can see that giant tree coming into view, and oh, cool, there's a slime island up there too. That would be kind of nice to have access to in the future. So that's kind of what I did, is I just took a little look around my immediate surroundings, get a feel for the terrain, see what's where. You can see some, uh, oh wow, horses, nice. Some sheep hanging out. I don't need any sheep at the moment, but because uh, I got the wool that I need. And I didn't even shear them, I just found a couple random sheep and killed them. Because, uh, you know... I didn't feel like wasting iron on shears. Oh, uh, speaking of this other thing, you might have also remembered uh, towards the beginning of or middle of last episode, probably when I died, uh, I spawned over here and some poisonous spiders attacked me. What I didn't notice was cobweb on this greatwood tree. Uh, so some greatwood trees have cobwebs on them. And that's an indication that this is a cob or this is a greatwood tree that's infested by poisonous spiders. And there's the infestation point right there. Haha. -ha. Okay. So I'm just gonna light this area up. What's cool about that is that there's usually some kind of chest underneath. I don't think I can get to it without breaking the spawner though. Well, let's break it. Why not? I don't need a cave spawner, spider spawner at all. 
Ta-da, I got an item. This is from Ender.io, by the way. Uh, you can take broken spawners and uh, kind of repair them a little bit. what I get here? Ooh, I got the Ender Sword? That's nice, I'll take that. Some Iridium more. Wow, Ender.io hookups, man, let me tell you. I will absolutely take the Ender Sword. Nice, that's cool. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna take a while to get upgraded, but heck, I mean, I'll gladly take that. It's not terribly hard to make, I don't think. Let's see, the Ender just requires some dark steel, uh, which you can make with a combination of iron, coal, and obsidian. So it's not like, you know, the greatest sword in the game or anything. It's not incredibly hard to get, but it's a heck of a lot better than my uh, stone sword. So I'll happily take that. All right, let's get back downstairs. And then you can, of course, also uh, power it up and it'll become even better which is absolutely what I'll do eventually. So yeah, I found the apple biome. Uh, so there's a few things I want to work on this episode. I'd like to, um, I'm going to just kind of put some stuff away in the boots here too. Those are nice. Those also require upgrades. Um, so is it already? Yeah, anvil upgrades. Those are what's available, not what's already applied. So they're basic boots for now, but we can also upgrade those later. So heck, I'll take that. Um, all right, let me situate my inventory just a little bit here. I'll put this broken spawner away. I do have a little bit of copper and tin now. That's kind of nice. And I'm going to make sure I have some food on me. I might want to start doing just a little bit by way of um, ore processing just for an early game option. So let's get started taking a look at that. I was mining and I got killed by an ender mini. No fun. Uh, I decided in order to progress the way I want to at this point, I need just a couple more resources that I don't currently have. So I'm just doing a little bit of mining. Let's see if I can get this guy again. Come back here, Ender Mini. It's down here. Iron Orberry bushes, I'll gladly take those. Not sure if I'll do much with the Ender, with the uh, Orberry bushes, because you can kind of automate them if you get into it, but oh, we'll see. There he is. Gotcha. Nice. Ender pearl for me. All right. So, back to hunting for what I need. Oh, nice. There's a little, uh, check this out. That's cool. I'll take that any day. Let me get some of the Surtis Quartz ore. Um, a nice little mine shaft down here. That's nice. Definitely hear more Enderman shenanigans going on, and I don't like the sound of that. Ah! Ender mini. <laughs> oh, me and Crazy Pants. We're going to have a discussion about mini Endermen. All right, guys, I'll be back in a minute. Once I finish getting some of the resources I want, I'm going to explore this cave a little bit and see if I find anything good. So I'm still exploring this underground cave, but I found something very exciting. Orberry bushes. Uh, these guys are going to be definitely a staple of something I use in the near future. Cool. Uh, orberry bushes grow little experience orbs, basically, that you can eat and get experience from. So we will definitely be taking advantage of those whenever you find orberry bushes. They're pretty rare to find underground, but if you find them, grab them. All right, guys, just like to always let you know when I found my first set of diamonds. Just have to make sure I can navigate these uh, lava pools. Hooray, diamonds. Gotta make sure my inventory has some space too. Uh, what can I dish in here? I think I can get rid of this stone axe for now. Achievement diamonds! All right, more hunting for ores. I will be back in just a minute. All right, about time I found what I was looking for, redstone. Uh, looks like redstone's pretty deep on this map. I should mention to you guys, um, the, the FDB team does change the way ores spawn a little bit to kind of, you know, make sure that you have the right number of ores for the number of mods you have installed. They tweak some of, like, the values, um, and they also tweak a little bit where ores spawn to kind of give it more of an even distribution. So you'll find some ores deeper, you'll find some ores higher up. This is just something you guys are going to want to know about so that if you're looking for a particular type of ore, you know, it might be deeper or, you know, higher up in the world than you think. I'm hanging out right around Y level six or seven, and that's where I found a good amount of redstone and some more diamonds, too. So let's go upstairs and start working on the basics of a little bit of an industrial system, right? So I'm decided I'm going to try a new mod for 
starting out in the world. Um, in the past, I've started with thermal expansion. I've started with industrial craft. I've started with, there's a good handful of mods uh, that I've started with for Origin. I've used Ars Magica before, which unfortunately is not in the pack, by the way. In case anybody's wondering why Ars Magica is in the pack, um, the Ars Magica mod author unfortunately uh, decided to put a hold on mod modding for a while. So he's no longer around. And uh, I just wasn't comfortable having it in the pack. I wasn't feeling how stable it was and, you know, wanted to make sure it was good for you guys. But like I said, we've used a ton of things for early world gen or early uh, world, uh, you know, powering of stuff. So what I'm going to do is grab a few things. I've only got four lead ore. Wow. Okay. That's cool. Let's cook it up, I guess. So I've got some lead. There's something else I'm going to want and need. Um, sneak outside here. How is it? Oh, it's nighttime. All right. I don't want to go too far. I'm going to sleep. So this is, like I said, going to be a totally new way of doing early game or doubling. And I think it'll work out pretty well. And I'm pretty sure I've got all the resources I need. It might be a little bit slow early on, but like I said, it's early games. So what do you want? All right, let's sneak over to a, a beach. And I think there's one right over here. I'm just going to dig some sand up out of this beach. And then uh, once I've completed that task, I will come back to show you guys where we're going to start. All right, let's see if I've got everything I need. So the first thing I want to make is going to basically be a way to generate power. The power system I'm going to go with is uh, Redstone Flux, which is from Thermal Expansion. Uh, there's several mods that add ways to get Redstone Flux, and one of the best early game ways of getting energy is using what's called the Survivalists Generator. This is a generator from X Utilities, and it produces a very small amount of power, but it does so very, very efficiently. Uh, um, so basically fuel can last about 20 times the base rate of normal fuel, but it does a very low amount of power output. So that's what we're going to use. Uh, in order for this to work, I'm going to need a couple of pistons. So our, uh, I've actually decided that I want to go with, let's see, I'm going to put these guys here. Um, two of these generators, because like I said, they output such a small amount of energy that you really want to kind of have a couple of them if you're really going to use this. So the recipe here uh, is going to require the following. There we go. So two survivalist generators, uh, and I'm going to want to throw some coal into them. So I'm going to get like half, maybe a quarter stack each uh, of coal into this thing. And for now, I'm thinking I probably don't need another. Well, I'll leave that there for now. Uh, I'll put this here and this here. You're going to start cooking. So we can see we get five RF per tick, which is a very small amount. Uh, it's really going to take a very long time for us to build up any significant amount of power from our two survivalist generators, but they cost you like, what, two pieces of iron and some cobble? What do you expect? There's definitely more advanced uh, generators from extra utilities that are available. The furnace generator uses a lot more iron. Um, we'll get one of these eventually. Um, and then we can also get power from lava and ender pearls and redstone and all kinds of other stuff, which we'll get more into later on. Uh, so those are your two basic survivalist generators. Now, we're generating power, but I'd also like to be able to store it. So for that, I'm going to get a uh, energy cell. There's four different tiers of energy cell that come standard with thermal expansion, and there's a couple mods that add other versions. Uh, the most basic is the leadstone energy cell. Uh, so in order to craft one of these guys, what we're going to want is a leadstone energy cell frame, which is basically um, a block of redstone in the middle with, I believe it was glass on the corners and lead like so. No, lead on the corners and glass on the sides. There you go. And then we can use this to get ourselves um, the leadstone energy cell, which requires three pieces of copper. I'm gonna need a little more copper than I have. Oh, really? This thing needs a electrum ingot now? That I wasn't aware of. That must have changed because I don't remember requiring Electrum for your base one. That's okay. I'll hold off on making that for now. I'm gonna go ahead and throw together another chest real quick And this is where I'll store some pre-crafted mod items um, That is a recipe that must have changed so no big deal. These guys are pretty capable of storing um, about 500,000 RF each so yeah, you can see there are 500,000. Let's see. I want to change my key bindings here. I always change my keybind for turning on and off any eye. 
So a decent amount of power can be stored there. So the way I want to go ahead and double my ores is using a mod uh, Ender IO. It has a device called the Sag Mill. So we're gonna need another piston, a little bit more iron, some flint, which I have all that stuff ready. And then we're gonna want a machine casing, which requires a bit more iron and a basic capacitor, which is copper, redstone, and gold nuggets. Doesn't sound terrible. So let's make that copper, redstone, and gold nuggets. Cool. That'll get me my basic capacitor. Uh, then we're going to need, as you saw, some uh, iron bars. We're also going to want a piston. So by the way, a little tip for those of you who don't know it, when you look up the recipe, if you're in a crafting table, you can click on the question mark to see a shadow representation of the recipe there. Or if you happen to have all the items you need, you can hold shift and click and it'll automatically fill the table with items from your inventory. Awesome. Uh, just a neat little trick for those of you who might not know that one. So a little bit more uh, iron to get this thing rolling. So let's get four more iron. I'm being inefficient, I know, but basically instead of wasting, um, you know what I can do? I can do it like that. Should be good, maybe. Uh, I'm just being inefficient with my burning as opposed to inefficient with the iron because really what I'd like to do is get as much iron as possible into this sag mill so I don't want to uh, really do too much now how's this guy doing all right yeah 20,000 RF here 22,000 there I'm not terribly sure how much energy the sag mill uses to ore double I'm sure it's more than 10 RF per tick so what we're gonna want to do because it's such an early game design is basically you know let these generators run for a while they are really efficient on the coal by the way you'll see that it generates in total 80,000 RF um, per piece of coal so that's pretty darn good take my word for it all right so now we should be able to get our sag mill nice tap that guy down and there we are uh, his internal capacitor will start to fill he's capable of storing about a hundred thousand RF total so you can see we uh, drained energy out of our survivalist generators and any further energy getting created is immediately drained into the sag mill um, and then you know we'll have some other stuff going on here so let's start or double what I think I'd like to start off with is iron because one of the first things I'm gonna want to do is um, kind of get lots of iron so I can get a better generator going so that this sag mill can run more often. Um, now here's a cool tip. Let's get ourselves a chest. So the nice thing about Ender IO is you can configure different sides to do different things. And when you click on this little configure IO button, you have the access to, to see the different sides and, and determine what they can do. What I'm actually gonna do is configure the top where the chest is to have, uh, and I right click for this, I'm gonna have it not only pull from the chest items that it can sag mill and process, but I'm gonna have it push as well. So I'm gonna put it in push and pull mode. Uh, and with this, I should be able to do the following. Any iron ore that I place in here, so I'll just put one piece of iron for now, should automatically get dropped into the sag mill and it'll get processed and turned into uh, a certain amount of ore. And we'll see how much we get here. There we go, we got two iron ore powder. And then it's automatically output into the chest. So real cool Ender IO lets you automatically pull and push into adjacent inventories. Very nice. Uh, you can see the recipes here that are available. There's a ton of things you can process. Uh, most of the Ender IO blocks have this recipe button so you can figure out you know, how to get stuff. You'll also notice you can just hit the R for the recipe key on the sag mill. And uh, you've got a pretty good chance of getting two iron powder. And you've got a small chance to get some tin and some ferrous and maybe even some cobblestone every now and then while processing this thing. Cool. So what I'm going to do, and you'll notice that it's not pulling the iron powder. The sag mill and most of the Ender I.O. blocks are intelligent enough to know what's supposed to go in and what's supposed to come out, and it won't suck items in that can't be processed. So there's nothing that this sag mill can do with the iron powder. So we're just going to not pull it. But when I put iron ore in, boom, it snagged it. It's going to start processing. It's going to burn through some of the power that I've already started generating. You can see right now it does tell you it's using 20 RF per tick. So if I wanted to keep a steady balance between how much energy I'm creating and how much I'm using, I would need 
four survivalist generators at five per tick total, uh, and that would be able to handle the requirements of this thing. But because we have this little internal energy buffer here and the buffers here, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Like I said, we're gonna upgrade to a better um, process in the near future. So for now, you can see I'm getting my iron powder and occasionally on a low percent chance, I'll get some ferrous or some cobble or even maybe some tin. All right, guys, we've got some basic ore doubling. I'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, a little bit of time has passed here. And uh, by the way, you'll notice that we started collecting cobblestone out of this chest. So this thing does uh, accept cobblestone and can grind it down into to some things. So keep that in mind. Cobblestone does have a use. It'll usually get ground down into uh, sand or, you know, I don't know exactly what it can go down to. I guess it's probably in here somewhere. Uh, typically sand and maybe a low chance for something else. So there you go, cobblestone getting ground up. Doesn't really need to be done, obviously, but it did happen as a result of uh, the automation piece. And oh, sand can even be ground up into here and uh, you can get some other stuff like silicon, cool. Silicon's gonna be useful for some other stuff later on in the mod, so I'm gonna let that happen and uh, finish itself off. And then there we go, all done, nice. So we've got some silicon there, it's a low chance. I think we processed four or five pieces of sand and we only got um, you know 50% chance, if that makes sense. One other thing we could do, by the way, if we wanted this to be a little bit more efficient, is put some flint uh, or some other items in here to increase the efficiency, but I haven't gotten to the point where I'm comfortable doing that yet. For now, I want to break this block, because I don't want all the, um, the, the stuff in here. I want this to be charged in its internal capacitors. I don't want to accept power anymore. Um, this thing might retain its power when I break it. It does, nice, that's good to know. Uh, I want to make a furnace now. Since I made an automated uh, electrical-based or doubling system, why don't we get rid of these boring old furnaces and start making something better? So what can I get that's furnace-based? Well, I'm figuring I'll go with Ender IO again, and let's see what kind of cool blocks are available in here. Uh, we might have to just type Ender IO. Sometimes that at mod thing doesn't work. Uh, there's some generators that generate power. Alloy smeltery, that's what I'm looking for, cool. So I just need a bit more iron. That doesn't sound terrible. I can cook up iron. I have tons of iron dust. So I'm gonna cook up, uh, let's say 16 iron. That might be enough. We'll get this cooking for now. And I'll be back in a minute once I've made the remaining preparations to build the alloy smeltery because that is gonna be very nice. All right guys, let's recap. So alloy smeltery requires three furnaces. So I shouldn't have a problem making that. One, two, three. And then we're also going to need one of these guys, a cauldron for the alloy smeltery, and then four more iron ingots, which should be just about ready to finish smelting. There we go. I should be able to make an alloy smeltery. Nice. So where um, the, the sag mill can double your oils, the, the alloy smeltery is basically um, a furnace that can be, um, you know, use RF energy to burn things in the same way that this furnace can. Now, the benefit to doing it this way as opposed to using one of these furnaces, the survivalist generator is super efficient on coal. And because we haven't gotten a lot of resources yet, we're just super early game, we don't have a lot of coal ready, uh, we can go ahead and hook this guy up. So let's do uh, something similar. I'll configure the input output side. We're gonna set this guy to pull and push. So there we go, nice. So it's gonna snag the iron powder out of there. It'll start smelting it up. Uh, you can see its current mode is set to uh, smelt everything. There's actually a couple different modes, which I'll get into in just a little bit with the alloy smeltery, but you can actually use this to combine different types of ore into different metals and stuff. It's pretty neat, um, but I think if we pay attention here, this thing should burn three items at a time. So you'll notice that we currently have 36 iron powder in there. Uh, the nice thing about this, it, now it's, it's a little bit, I'm not gonna say like super fast to do that. I'm gonna actually take these guys out of here. I don't want it cooking up tin powder, I'll let it cook. Uh, but I don't want it cooking up, well, I guess I can cook the ferrous metal as well if it wants, but I don't want it doing anything with the silicon because we're gonna need this for a few things, as a matter of fact. Um, I guess alloy smeltery, yeah. I don't want that to try and smelt into electrical steel, even though we don't have any coal powder. Um, or iron nuggets. I guess you're trying to smelt them into something. Oh, I see. It grabbed them in preparation to smelt something else. So I'll let the ferrous go in. I just want to demonstrate to you guys, uh, watch how long it takes for three ferrous to go as opposed to just one. So it's definitely taking its, its uh, long time to go. 
And there we go. Now, one, much faster. Cool. Um, ferrous ingots could be smelted with something else as well. So I'll take those out. Um, what I'm going to do, if you wanted to be a little bit better about it, if you wanted to make sure the things that, you know, went into a different chest, you could, of course, always go ahead and switch this up and have a chest behind it or in front or below or something like that. I might change that up later, but for now, this will work. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, let it continue cooking up the iron and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So overall, I feel like this I, I wasn't entirely sure how good of a start this would work out to be, but it is pretty nice. Uh, this thing, by the way, also uses 20 RF per tick, so, you know, we, we don't have a ton of power yet, but that's the reason I'm cooking up all this iron. One of the things I'm going to probably work on next episode is another form of power generation so that we can uh, store this a little bit better. Uh, the good news is that we can also use this alloy smeltery to get ourselves um, some of the mixed metal ingots like Invar and Electrum. So all I got to do is cook up a little bit of gold and silver, and then I can start making some really nice stuff. So long story short, the alloy smeltery is a nice way to get started in some uh, nice advanced thermal expansion stuff early on. So we've got that up and running. I do want to take a quick look outside and see what's going on. Oh, it's daytime. That's kind of good, even though I hear mobs everywhere. Snag some food. You'll notice, like I said, the uh, blueberry bushes will kind of grow. They'll grow up to a height of about three in total. So once uh, this smaller bush grows into a fully sized bush like this one, it'll spawn a new little guy on top that he can get up to. I wouldn't mind real quick. Ah. Gotcha. Uh, taking a run over here. Got some great wood trees showing up. What type of bush is this? This is more blueberries, so that's kind of cool. I really wanted to see if I could find the third berry type. So these are raspberries. Not bad. I might snag... Five, six, seven, eight bushes worth. Because that's how many bushes I have of the blueberries back home. And what kind of these? Are these the same raspberry? Yeah, they are. Real quick, just want to take a peek over this hill because I saw another berry bush in the distance there. I think these are more raspberries. Yep. What kind of bush is this? That definitely looks like maybe blackberries? That might be cool. Yeah, nice. So let's snag them. Again, just right click to pick them up and I'll snag one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. So you'll find that you can go ahead and uh, combine three of these different types of berries with a wooden bowl to get a berry medley, which is a much better source of food than the berries individually. So let's run back to our house real quick. You know, I was going to eat to make sure my hunger didn't get low, but I want to show you guys the, the benefit of using the wooden bowl. So I'll hold off until we get home to eat something and maybe even have that much more hunger. I really like this spawn that I got, by the way. Um, lots of stuff nearby, lots of like rubber trees and great wood trees and all kinds of just... There's, there's, sometimes you have to run around looking for the proper amount of ore gen. What is it, Halloween? Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, sometimes you have to run around looking for the proper amount of stuff. I'll plant my bushes outside later. Oh, are you kidding me? Baby zombie, get out of here. I hate baby zombies. They're like one of my most feared creatures because they're just super annoying. Um, there we go. So let's get just a few wooden bowls here. There we go. And then I'll combine these berry types. Nice, that'll be a good source of food for me. Uh, these berry medleys, you'll notice, are much better than the individual berries, right? Totally good. All right, for now, guys, I think that's a good wrapping up point for the episode. We have a pretty decent amount of resources ready to go. Uh, I'm going to continue to process my ores between this episode and next. 
Uh, you can see I'm just kind of sorting my inventory here. I'll of course build an automated sorting system later, but we're not quite to that point yet. Uh, so yeah, between this episode and next, I'll continue cooking stuff. I'll continue pretty much doing everything that we've been doing uh, here, processing ores. And I might come back with some ores processed already, maybe not. We'll see what I come up with between this episode and next to have done. Um, but what I will definitely do is plant some berry bushes. And pretty soon we'll probably want to move out of this dingy hole in the ground, which has been, you know, a nice hole in the ground for a short period of time, but don't want us to live there forever. We'll build a base pretty soon. There we go. And I'll set up another row for the uh, blackberries in a bit. All right, guys, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed episode two. Pretty pleased with our progress so far. For now, take it easy.